You want to make a difference in the world. You want to do something extraordinary in the world. The magnificence of who you are is far greater than any of the fantasies you might impose on yourself from trying to live subordinate to outside traditions and conventions and belief systems and aren't really authentic to you. I'd like to do address the topic of empowering each of the primary areas of your life. Now, I divide life and different thought leaders have given different divisions of life, but I divide life into our spiritual quest, where living an inspired mission, mental quest, which is creating innovative ideas that contribute to the world and using your mental capacities to the fullest, <clears throat> your vocational quest, which is actually doing something of contribution and service that you have you know, sustainable fair exchange and remuneration for a career path that inspires you. A financial quest to be able to have more money at the end of your month and month at the end of your money where you're expanding yourself financially so you're not in financial uh, slavery or destitution. A relationship or family quest where you have love and intimacy and a relationship that's meaningful. In social quest, where you're actually making a difference and being a leader or influence in the world. And physical quest, where you have vitality, beauty, attractiveness, and uh, you know, wellness. Those are the seven areas of life, spiritual, mental, career, financial, family, social, and physical. Financial, so family, social, and physical. In any of those areas, you don't empower other people over power. In fact, if you don't empower yourself in your mental capacities, you'll probably be told what to think. If you don't, and don't if you don't think for yourself and and trust your own knowing, you'll probably be thinking what other people tell you to think. If you don't empower yourself in business, you'll be told what to do. If you don't empower yourself in finance, you'll be told what you're worth. Maybe you'll end ending up on Social Security or something, which is sustenance, and that's it. If you don't empower yourselves in a relationship, you'll probably do honeydew things around the yard or house that you don't really want to do. If you don't empower yourselves in socially, you'll be told what propaganda to believe. A lot of misinformation, particularly right now during the COVID period. Uh, if you don't empower yourself physically, you'll be probably told what drugs to take or organs to remove. And if you don't empower yourself spiritually, you may be told some antiquated dogma that may not be rational that you may be following um, that's not really self-empowering. So any area of your life you don't empower, people overpower. And the more areas of your life you don't empower, the more people overpower you. And the more you feel like a victim of history, not a master of destiny. And the more likely you will feel like there are people out there controlling you uh, and the world is controlling you and you're feeling you're living by duty instead of design. And that's not, in my opinion, the wisest way to live. It's wiser to empower those areas. I've spent the last 49 years of my life in the pursuit of how do you do that? <clears throat> Setting everything I can to try to, for myself to be able to do it, but also disseminate that information to share it with other people. So if you have something to write with or write on or type with, you might want to take a couple notes. Now, <clears throat> Every human being has a set of priorities and set of values that they live their life by. And whatever is highest on their unique set of values, and I mean unique because it's like a fingerprint, set of priorities that they live by, things are important, most important in their life. If they find out what's really most important and they live according to what's most important and they live by priority and they fill their day with things that are deeply important and meaningful, they awaken their greatest mental capacities. In fact, that is a solution for all of them. People who live by priority go farther than people who don't. If you don't fill your day with high priority actions that inspire you, your day is going to fill up with low priority distractions that don't. So if you want an inspired life, if you want an expanded life, you want to live by priority. Now, what's interesting is when you do and you fill your day with the highest priority, the pulmonary nuclei and the thalamus which is just underneath the cortex, uh, filters all your sensory information that you can perceive in the world through it and allows you to maximize your awareness 
and maximize the information to make decisions and to maximize your clarity of intention. So your mental capacity by living by your highest priority is to your advantage because you're maximizing your awareness. You literally are filtering your reality. We're overwhelmed by infinity if we don't filter it. And the filtering mechanism of this thalamus filters out those beats of information that allow you to maximize what's valuable to you most. So by identifying what's really most important to you <clears throat> and prioritizing your daily actions in that, you maximize your awareness and your influence. Because anybody who's living by their highest value automatically exemplifies a more inspired life. People who live by their highest values, their self-worth goes up. Their confidence goes up. Their leadership skills go up. So from a social perspective, you're automatically helping your leadership role by living congruently by what you value most. And what's interesting is anything you ever want to learn out there, and you're going to go through life and life is changing, you're going to have to keep current with knowledge and learn. I think in the last two years with COVID, I think it's essential that you had to adapt to technology and learn um, the whatever it is that you want to learn. If you ask the question, how specifically is learning this information, this content, this topic, helping me fulfill what I value most? You will maximize your absorption of that information, retention of the information, utilization of that information, creative ideas with that information. I've gone into schools and helped kids that were having difficulty in their classes who are in, uninspired by it and disengaged in classes. And if you ask them, how is the class they're taking helping them fulfill what's most meaningful to them, what's highest in their priorities, they can't see it. So they're completely disengaged and they don't want to learn it. They're tuning it out. They have attention deficit disorder, uh, defiant disorder, and all kinds of labels put on them because of that. But if we ask them a simple question, how is this information going to help you fulfill what you value most, and then make them make the connections in their brain, they immediately will do a greater response in school to be more attentive in school and their grades will go up. And I've proven this in thousands of kids. So I'm, that's not a question in my mind. I'm certain I can go and do that. I could guarantee a child will increase their retention and absorption and application of information if I do that exercise. We've done it in thousands of kids. So I'm certain if you take the time to ask the question, because the quality of your life is based on the quality of the questions you ask, how specifically is learning whatever I'm learning going to help me fulfill what I value most? I will increase or you will increase your capacity to absorb that information, use it. And it will go into a long-term memory instead of immediate memory. Most people, when they disengage in school, they go into a short-term memory and they forget it before the, when the, once the test is over, they forget it. They don't care about learning it because nobody wants to learn what's uninspiring to them. They want to learn what's meaningful to them. There's no such thing as a child that doesn't want to learn. There's a child that wants to learn what's important to them and they don't see it in the classes they're taking. They don't see the relationship. I think it's the responsibility of a teacher, parent, and child to learn how the classes are taken are going to help them fulfill what's meaningful to them so they can be engaged in school. I believe that the teachers in school deserve to be able to know how teaching this class is gonna be meaningful to them so they're engaged and inspired and enthused teaching it. And if that happens, that's gonna help on the learning process. And if you're at work and you don't see how the, the, the boss tells you, well, you need to learn this, you go, I don't wanna learn that. But if you ask how specifically is learning this gonna help me fulfill what's important to me, you won't be learning it for them, you'll be learning it for you. And then you'll be more engaged. So answer that question 20, 30, 40 times. And the time spent on that is insignificant compared to the time saved on the learning process. Now let's go into for business. Nobody goes to work for the sake of a business. They go to work to fulfill what they value most. <clears throat> so if a person has got a high value on their beautiful children and they got a job and the job says, well, you're going to have to work over hours. And they go, well, I got a daycare center. I can't, I can't do that. They're, they're going to be frustrated by that job. If they can't see how that job's helping them get what they want, they're going to go, I'm disengaged, and they're going to probably quit the job. People want to know that what they're doing in their job is meaningful and inspiring and makes a difference to other people, fulfilling other people's highest values and fulfilling their values, their highest values. So one of the great questions in life, if you're in a job that's not inspiring or parts of it, may not be all of it, but parts of it, ask yourself, how is that part that's less inspiring helping me fulfill what I'm committed to, what I'm really, what is highest on my values. And by the way, in the, in the, on my website, drdemartini.com, there's a value determination process. It's free, it's complimentary, it's private. And I would encourage you to go through and take 30 minutes of your time to go through it 
to determine what really is important to you, what your life really demonstrates. And the program I teach in the Breakthrough Experience, which I teach 1,133 times, I go through that in there and help people identify what's really meaningful to them so they can start structuring their life in a way that they see life on the way, not in the way. And they're inspired by their life instead of despired and frustrated, which creates symptomatology in all areas of their life. All the symptoms you have in the physically and in your business and career and all the areas of your life are feedback mechanisms to let you know you're not being authentic. Because what authenticity means is living according to what you value most. Your identity revolves around that. And if you can see how you're, what you're learning is helping you get that, you'll feel more authentic. When you see your job is helping you do it, you'll feel more inspired by your work. And when you're doing work that's meaningful, you're more likely to be philanthropic and service-oriented and more likely to grow opportunities in business. And if you're not, you're feeling dissociated. You're wanting to escape it. And people that are at work that aren't inspired by their work want to escape. They go on the internet, they go and eat, they go and do drugs, they escape, they get sick. Those are symptoms of not seeing how what they're doing is helping them fulfill what's meaningful to them. So the question you want to ask is how specifically is the job responsibility I have How's it helping me fulfill what's most meaningful to me in my life, my mission in life, what's my purpose and priority in life, my identity in life, what's most important to me in life? If you can see it, you will be engaged and you will then do well in, in your business. And if you own the business, you'll flourish more. And if you get other people to do the same, they'll become more productive. And if you're in a job working for somebody else, you'll be more inspired by it. And why would you want to go through life and not be inspired by your life? That's insane. Don't bitch about your job. Enrich your job by finding out how what you're doing is helping you fulfill what you value most. And it'll liberate a lot of energy and free up a lot of force in your life instead of, you know, frustration in your life. But also just know that when you're communicating with customers or employees or bosses or anybody, that they live with a set of values too. And whenever you're communicating, if you can communicate what you value in terms of what they value, you get less resistance, less frustration and more results, particularly if you're doing it with the customer. Customers aren't coming to buy things from you just because they want to buy things from you. They're coming there to fulfill what their needs and their, their dominant buying motives and their highest values are. And you need to know what they are and care enough about the customer to know what they are to communicate what you do in terms of that. And that's why knowing your highest value and knowing other people's highest values are crucial for mastering of life and engaging and inspiring in your career. And so also, if you're leading people, if you're communicating, if you do that in their values, they will be more engaged and inspired to do what you want to delegate and frees you up. If you're not delegating things in life and doing the highest priority things in life, don't expect an inspired life. You have to be liberated from lower priority things that weigh you down, that causes aging and amygdala responses in the brain, and get on with the things that are most meaningful. Your wellness quotient will go up, your productivity will go up, your energy will go up, your leadership skills will go up your business will go up. The more people are engaged in doing what they are inspired by and whatever's highest in their priorities, the more powerful the business. That's what gives them the competitive, innovative event, uh, you know, uh, the leading edge and innovation. So ask the question, whatever I'm learning, how does it help me fulfill my values for, for the mind? And whatever I'm doing in my career, how does it help me fulfill my highest values in my career? And when you hire people, don't hire people that aren't inspired by doing that action. You're going to buy a micromanager and push them uphill. And if you do, they have slipped through there. You can engage them by asking a question and hold them accountable and helping them see the relationship. I believe that the onboarding of anybody in a business deserves to know how what they're inspired by, how this job is going to help them do that. But don't hire somebody that's not inspired by that. Or if they have, make sure you give them a way of helping them become inspired by it. If you want productive people, you want people that want to do quality service. That's essential. And in the third area in finances, the hierarchy of your values dictates your financial destiny. If you don't have a value on wealth building, you're not likely to ever build wealth. You'll be living day to day, month to month, and surviving all the time. Because unless you have a value on buying assets and taking a portion of whatever you earn and put it away where it starts to earn passive income for you, you'll be working your life for money instead of having it work for you. So the hierarchy of your values will dictate your financial destiny, will determine whether you buy an asset or buy a consumable depreciable that is a liability ultimately. So your hierarchy of values, again, goes into impacting your empowerment of your financial destiny. 
And I tell people, unless you have a value in wealth building, it's not going to stay with you. Money circulates through the economy from those who value at least to those who value at most. So if you don't have a value on wealth building, you're not likely to ever build wealth. And wealth is also comes from the word wheel, which means well-being. Your health quotient goes up. The socioeconomic position you are has an impact on your well-being and your wealth and your health components. You'll see that the people that are in healthier positions are usually in wealthier positions. So by having a value on wealth building, you'll actually then put some portion of whatever you earn. You want to take a portion of whatever you earn and put it into something that's an asset that builds it, stocks in a company or real estate holdings, something that actually works for you. And the more you do, the more you end up having a passive income. And then you're going to work not because you have to, but you go because, because you love to. I build financial independence in my life, not just because I wanted a fancy lifestyle. You don't need that. It's basically for the sake of doing what you love because you don't have to, you do it because you love to. That's the liberty that comes. So taking the time to ask yourself, how specifically is building financial resources gonna help me fulfill what's my most meaningful to me? How's it gonna help me in my career? How's it gonna help me in my development and my education? The more wealth you have, the higher the probably the quality of education you'll get. They'll probably have more business. One Businesses that have more cash flow and more reserve end up with more business. That's why the Fortune 100 companies have the biggest cash reserves. Money goes, money flows, basic law. So it's wise to master that area of your life because any area of your life you're not going to master, somebody's going to overrule you in it and you'll be told what to do. And brokers will take your money because you're not educated or you'll end up paying it all into taxes and it'll go to social causes that may not be inspiring to you. So you want to make sure that you take a portion, whatever it is, and live within your means and save a portion and eventually you'll have a crescendo financially instead of a decrescendo life. Also in your family and relationship, just know that people want to be loved and appreciated for who they are. And who they are is an expression of what they value most. And who you are is an expression of what you value most. If your highest value is your children, you'll call yourself a mother. If your highest value is a business, an entrepreneur, you'll call yourself an entrepreneur. Whatever is highest in your value, your identity revolves around. And your most authentic identity is what you want to be loved for. So taking the time to ask, how is it what they're dedicated to helping you fulfill what you're dedicated to? And how is what you're dedicated to helping fulfill what they're dedicated to will allow you to have a dialogue of communication instead of alternating monologues. When they're talking down to you, or you're talking down to them, no, one half of you aren't listening. And that's careless or careful instead of caring. And by, by communicating what you value most in terms of what other people value most, you help other people get what they want to get in life and they help you get what you want to get in life. And so the mastery and empowerment of relationships is really about knowing how to communicate what's inspiring to you in terms of what's inspiring to them. And that mastery is worth the time spent. That's why in the breakthrough experience, I'm training people on how to do that. And in the value applications that I do is for that. And this is the purpose of this little presentation today to try to wake up that idea in your mind so you can possibly go and do the value determination or join me at the breakthrough experience so I can teach you how to do exactly that which is more than what I can do in a few minutes here. But there's also the social empowerment and people automatically rise in power when they're doing something and they find that one thing that they become excellent at, great at and known for and build momentum around by living by the highest priority in your life and filling your day with the highest priority actions. And again, delegating lower priority actions, you are way, wake up your leadership, you build momentum, incremental momentum towards something that leaves a, a mark in the world, a legacy in the world. You're, you have a leader inside you. Whatever you live by your highest values and not lower values, you automatically wake it up. It automatically emerges. Uh, it's an emergent function of living congruently by what is truly meaningful to you. That's why prioritizing your life. I, I asked, I was asked by, uh, you know, how do I get an inspired life? I said, live by priority. Mary Kay taught me many years ago, 37 years ago, to make sure you ask yourself, what's the highest priority action I can do today to help me fulfill my mission and stick to the priorities. You feel you're on top of the world. You're more resilient and adaptable. Your immune system rallies. You're more energized. You're more creative. Your mind expands space and time horizons and gives yourself permission to do bigger things in life. You automatically have a time horizon that goes beyond your life and leave a legacy, an immortality, if you will. So leadership is a byproduct of living congruently according to what you value most. That's why I say go back on the value determination process on my website and get do that again and again until you get a tear of gratitude and you're certain about what's really most important to you. Your life demonstrates it. And many people, when I ask what it is, it's 
They tell you a bunch of things they think it should be. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what it is. I'm interested in what's authentic for you. Every symptom in your life is trying to get you authentic. And if you stick to that, amazing things happen in your life. And physically, wow, what a difference in your physiology. When you live by your highest value, your blood glucose and oxygen goes into the forebrain, activates the executive center, which is objective and neutral, not highly polarized and emotional and subjective and biased, and more likely to be resilient and adaptable to anything that happens. You're not fearing the loss of things because you're more neutral. You're not infatuated with fearing the loss of it or not resentful, fearing gain of it. You're more stable. Your intuition is more homeostatic and able to allow you to be really inspired by something. So that's what heals you. I really believe that when you're doing what you love and are grateful for life or inspired by a vision and enthusiastically working on it, and you're certain about where you're going with your clarity, and you're on purpose with presence there, you're really present at what you're doing. Those are the great healers of life. And your physiology will rally if you do that. And when you stop and think about it, most of the symptoms of your body are nothing but feedback towards that objective. That's why I tell people to go and do that process and also learn the Demartini method, which is a method on taking all those distractions and impulses and instincts that are in the amygdala and calm them down and dampen them down and neutralize them so you're not carrying emotional baggage in your life. That's why in the, in the breakthrough, when I do the Demartini method on, I show people how to do it, they heal. They have transformations in their physiology from doing so. So you want to learn that in your life. It's, it gives you a competitive advantage in mastering your life and having way more vitality in life. People ask me, where do I get the energy that I have? Very simple, living congruently according to what you value most and clearing the baggage with the method that I developed, the Demartini method, clearing the baggage that accumulates from misinterpretations of life by having expecting yourself to live in other people's values or expecting others to live in your values. That's where most of the chaos comes from, uh, a futility instead of a utility. But when you have sustainable fair exchange and you're living with equanimity and authenticity in yourself and equity between you and others, now you're in utility, not futility, and you're now in the flow and you're not in the, you know, the frustrations. And by the way, that's the key to the spiritual inspiration. I, I'm not necessarily, I don't believe spirituality is in a box that some, you know, artificial tribal thinking process comes from. Spirituality is all the above. Every human being has a unique set of values and whatever is highest on their value that inspires them, as far as I'm concerned, that could be their spiritual path. That's their dharmic path, if you will. That's their equanimity within. And so whatever that is, whether it's raising a beautiful family or running a great business or going out and doing a social cause or meditating in some temple somewhere, all of it is spiritual. If it's inspiring, authentic, and deeply meaningful to you and it contributes, fantastic. But don't get so boxed into a little box. If it's not this, well, you're not spiritual. And anybody who doesn't do that, they're not spiritual because that judgment will block your heart and keep you from being inspired in, in what's deeply meaningful to you. So I believe that if you live by your highest values and you ask quality questions, you can empower all seven of those areas of life. Like I said, I spent 49 years doing whatever I can to help people do that. I'm certain that there's a science of doing that. And I've done what I can to share that. I'm trying to do a little bit just today in this little presentation. That's why I teach the Breakthrough Experience 1,133 times, because it's loaded with information designed for that. That objective, you don't want to sit there and live by duty all your life, subordinating to the crowd and the herd and not be heard. You want to make a difference in the world. You want to do something extraordinary in the world. The magnificence of who you are is far greater than any of the fantasies you might impose on yourself from trying to live subordinate to outside traditions and conventions and belief systems that aren't really authentic to you. You want to give yourself permission to shine, not shrink. And that's the reason I'm doing these little webinars every week, to try to give you just a catalyst an idea, something to, to, to propose, something to move you forward on an action step. And hopefully this uh, little presentation today will give you a catalyst for doing that. But just in addition to empowering the seven areas of life, there's one last little thing about balancing your emotions I wanna put in there and let you know about. There's a, a little free masterclass that I want you to please take advantage of, increasing your deserved level and finally getting what you want. Because every time you live by priority and you live authentically and you start to empower yourself, your self-worth is going to go up. You're more magnetic. You're going to have more people want to be around you to assist you in your mission in life. So this free masterclass, please take advantage of it. There's no way you can listen to this for 30 minutes without having something pop in your head. And there's no way you can go to that masterclass without the same.
So please take advantage of that. Join me on that. Go and do the value determination process on my website. Come and join me at the Breakthrough Experience. There's no way you can spend 24 hours with me without something happening in your life. And I, I'm certain of that. I've been doing it so long and thousands and thousands of people, I, I got enough track record to prove it. So please take advantage of that. Take action today. Don't procrastinate on it. Get onto it. When you live by your highest priority, you're disciplined, reliable, and focused. If you don't, you'll procrastinate, hesitate, and frustrate. You decide which one you want in life. A master of destiny, a victim of history. I will see you next week at our next little masterclass. Thank you for joining me. 